The title of this video sounds rather contradictory. Free to play and generating horrendous amounts of revenue? How can the devs have their cakes and eat it too? Well, allow me to show you. Fight. The collection of free-to-play games are available to the players without the requirement of any premium fee payment. But games don't just appear out of thin air. They are developed intricately by teams of tens and hundreds of designers. Programmers, artists, engineers, and managers working together for multiple years straight before a game is ready to be released. Even after the initial release, MMOs are not quite done with the development phase. The games have to be regularly updated with new levels, maps, and mechanics to keep the players engaged, and also prevent them from giving up on the game over plateaus of boredom or repetitiveness in the gameplay experience. So then it's quite natural to wonder, how do the companies behind these popular free-to-play games manage to keep pouring in the funding to keep the development cycle running? And also, as publicly traded companies, how do they earn profits for their investors? As surprising as it may sound, the companies behind these games are generating revenue and even boastful sums of profits. From selling such in-game goods to the players that are rather completely inessential for the players to own and isn't even required to keep playing the game forever for free. If you haven't guessed it yet, I am talking about cosmetics. Cosmetics are the items a player can use to customize or modify the appearance of their player character in a video game. Not to be confused with upgrades that may have a different appearance to them, but their real purpose is to grant the players an advantage over the in-game challenges and not just an aesthetical appeal. Practicing control over the appearance of the character you play, from its hair and skin tone to its outfit and dance moves, does indulge you in a more emotionally invested and immersive gameplay experience. A more invested and immersive gameplay experience means more player satisfaction and higher the rates of player retention. And the higher the rates of player retention, the higher the chances of generating revenue through other creative methods. One of those dominant methods being to leverage the player's urge to express. We players spend long hours, significant effort, and even a lot of money at times when indulging ourselves in the act of customizing our player characters. For the desire to express is a very innate and natural urge. To pursue it is only human. The companies behind these free-to-play games putting forward customizable characters and appealing cosmetics have recognized this urge of expression in the players since long. And paywalling a part or all of the cosmetic offerings helps them keep the game free and accessible for everyone, and also generate some revenue. Keeping the game free and accessible is specifically important given most MMOs are player versus player only. And that requires a large pool of players to deliver an uninterrupted and quicker matchmaking and peak gameplay experience. However, free-to-play games aren't the only ones that have offered character customization, though they have leveraged it the most. The experience has evolved from early games offering basic customization options like changing the color of your player vehicle directly through the menu screen, to later games offering more appealing and expressive cosmetic outfits, only equipable through their magnificent luxury stores set up in their open worlds, that have to be paid for with in-game currency that you earn doing other primary and secondary activities in the game's world. From there, it has been the many games since the last decade that have deployed paywalls around cosmetics. Most paid games now follow a model where they offer a base collection of free cosmetics available to all players, but also a larger collection of more detailed and appealing cosmetics put out for sale. Many games even offer exclusive cosmetics available only as pre-order bonuses. But the free-to-play category then completely flipped the usual model of the video game business by offering their whole unrestricted base game for absolutely no premium fee and placing all their bets on cosmetic item offerings. Games like Fortnite combined an original, fun, and addictive gameplay with a dedicated in-game store that is frequently updated with appealing cosmetic items including outfits, weapon skins, and dance emotes often inspired by, or in collaboration with, the popular culture happenings. From the characters of the most anticipated movies to the most trending musical artists, or even the protagonists from other popular action video games. Meanwhile, CSGO, another insanely popular FTP game, developed more of a gambling-like experience around its cosmetic offerings. 
In December 2012, Valve, the company behind CSGO and Steam, launched the Community Market Beta, a virtual trading platform for trading game-specific items. And because you don't trade items available abundantly for anyone to buy from an established store, to nurture rarity and exclusivity, Valve then began turning cosmetic items into assets. It did so by regularly updating the game with appealing cosmetics, or skins, but restricting the method to acquire those cosmetics only through unpredictable paid loot boxes, low chance post-match drops, or buying it from someone training it on the community market who acquired the item themselves through one of these three ways. Often, players are hooked into making repeated transactions by the unfulfilled desire of owning a specific cosmetic they are really attracted to. Regardless of whether the cosmetics are paywalled, put in a trading environment, or just require additional gameplay effort, it has not stopped the players from pursuing expression and deeper immersion by indulging themselves in the act of customizing their player characters to their individual taste or liking, given the games are providing a pretty fun gameplay experience to begin with. This pursuit of the players in expressing themselves through cosmetics that the developers spend quite an effort in producing has also helped the companies behind these FTP games from completely paywalling their games and keep the development cycle running for years, even without all of the player base contributing to the revenue. This is what has led to some good games to stay around for quite long, amass large pools of players, and generate significant amounts of revenue.